My name is Greg Long, and I grew up on this beach. And I mean that literally. In 1978, my father Steve became head lifeguard at San Clemente State Park, and my brother and sister and I were raised on the sand. These sands became a path that has taken me around the world to many different beaches. But it's to this beach that I've always returned and still call home today. The trouble is, at the rate things are going, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do that. My name is Brett Sanders. I'm a professor of civil and environmental engineering, urban planning and public policy at UC Irvine. Our beaches attract um, millions of people. People love be to, to come to the beach, to be a part of the coastline, to be invigorated by the sight of the ocean and the crashing of the waves and this, this, the stunning environment. Coastlines are one of the most dynamic parts of our world. It's just a, a highly dynamic environment and that makes it really hard to manage because it's hard to separate those short-term changes from the long-term changes that represent um, really significant threats to coastal communities, to infrastructure, to things that we care about. We've been looking at the changing San Clemente beach width with historical satellite imagery. Going back around uh, four decades, back to the mid-80s. So we took that data and we studied you know, how is the beach at San Clemente changing. And surprisingly, between the mid-1980s and to around 2010, the beach went up and down and up and down and up and down, but there was no significant trend one way or the other. It was a pretty stable coastline. And then somewhere between around 2010 and 2015, something changed. The sand, the sort of beach on average starting to, to sort of decline in width. And then sometime around 2020, that decline turned into a precipitous decline and the beach was just gone. In the last decade, I started, you know, noticing these stories. And I, I think if you're not paying attention to them, and most people don't when they go to the beach, you don't realize what's happening. You don't realize that shift. Even surfers, they might say, you know, there's a seasonal fluctuation in the sand. It'll be back next next winter or next summer because it does change and so if you're not paying attention in sort of a puzzle piece way you might not realize some of these drastic things that have happened somewhere around 2014 2015 there was a strong el nino that year which lifted the mean sea level up by several centimeters maybe maybe up to 10 centimeters for a sustained period of time and when that happened the waves that were naturally coming up on that beach we're able to come in a little bit further. So instead of just coming in and hitting sand and then running back down the beach, those waves were able to come in, strike the riprap, which was up against the railroad, reflect off the riprap, and then come back down. Once that happened, the waves are able to dig into the sand and pull it offshore. And, and that led to a permanent sort of decline of the beach width over time. Surfers tend not to think about the effect the El Nino weather phenomenon has on our beaches in terms of centimeters. We point to major swell events like 2014's Hurricane Marie, when 10 to 15 foot waves stripped many of San Clemente's beaches bare, depositing the sand far offshore. But whether by inches, yards, or metric tons, once it's gone, sand is almost impossible to get back, unless something is done, and done right. My name is Chris Webb. I work with Moffat and Nickel as a principal prod, um, coastal scientist, and I've worked with uh, beach nourishment, um, wetland restoration, and other types of shoreline management and coastal engineering projects. Nourishment is bringing in additional sand from outside of the system. The deeper ocean, dredge it, bring it up on the beach as new sand spread and allowed to move. But San Clemente beaches have not been nourished in any large scale way, in any systematic way. So San Clemente beaches are in a sand deficit that needs to be reversed. And you can go down at high tide to North Beach, a mid tide at North Beach, same down here at, in South San Clemente, and see exactly what that looks like. You have 
waves crashing onto rocks, no sand space to enjoy, to bring your kids down. That ocean is overtaking all the sand that exists. You have the lifeguard headquarters that might have to move inland, and lifeguards are going to be in the parking lot trying to rescue people. If the beach continues to erode at the rate that it is and we don't do anything, we don't replenish it, it would be devastating. Chris Duncan is my name. I'm the mayor of the city of San Clemente. San Clemente is a beach town. It was founded as a beach town. We're closing on 100 years of being a beach town. We're, we're not a beach town without the beach. That's where we go as a family to come together. It's where we go as a community to come together. It is also what our small businesses are built around. And so for us, the loss of that beach is an existential threat to our town. To be honest with you, I don't think there's been enough focus on it over the years. They've been waiting for 20 years to get this sand replenishment program in coordination with the Army Corps of Engineers, the federal government, the state government, and the city all put together this plan to bring sand, 251,000 cubic yards, which will fill in sand um, from Linda Lane to T Street. They started this plan in 1999, and we still don't have a grain of sand from that project. I could have had a child and that child would have been now in college, and it still hasn't gone through. We do have 250,000 cubic yards of sand coming that the Army Corps of Engineers is gonna be dropping at the pier area in San Clemente. Getting that 250,000 cubic yards was a 20-year process. A lot of that was community-based. That was people pushing and pushing and pushing and never giving up. That's a great project. That's one-tenth, however, of the volume that's placed at Surfside Colony, which is approximately two million cubic yards. The difference is that Surfside Colony is intended to feed 15 miles of beach, where uh, the San Clemente project is intended to you know, feed a relatively modest, shorter reach of beach, several miles. But everybody wants a wider beach, then something would need to be done as soon as possible. And I would say several million cubic yards. And it would probably need to be placed uh, over a longer reach of beach. That's a massive project that would make a big difference for a long period of time. But we've got to continue and expand those projects to hit all of our beaches and make sure we are out there dredging sand, we're getting sand from wherever we can get it, and we're putting it on our beaches. Because what it ends up allowing for is nourishment to occur, nourishment to last longer, nourishment to not have to occur so often and therefore in the long term be less costly because in my opinion the value of sand on the coastal beach is worth more than gold. It's my job as the mayor to keep this top of mind. It's our number one priority as a city and so we I'm constantly knocking on doors for our congressmen uh, and, and our state legislators and saying hey we need this and we need it now. What you can do is participate in the public process as we have that study moving forward. There's going to be town halls and meetings where we're going to have our consultant as part of those discussions. Really, really important that the public comes out and voices their individual concerns, making sure that, that the community comes out and participates in that process and, and uses, uh, uses their, their collective force to, to make change happen. Uh, but you know that, that's really what we need. We don't need more studies. We don't need more research. If we are going to bring back San Clemente's beaches, we need more sand and a thoughtful, sustainable beach nourishment program to restore San Clemente's invaluable coastline. And we need it now, before time runs out. <laughs>